<laughs> Look, I, I've had lots of conversations in recent days with fellow parents about vaccinating the smallies, the 5 to 11 year olds. The portal opened last weekend. I think uh, Paul Reid said there was 30 or 40,000 people signed up on the first weekend, which shows that there's an appetite out there for people to vaccinate their children. But I want to put the question that so many have asked me in the last couple of days. With everything we know now about Omicron, with, with the stage we're at in the pandemic, is there any point in vaccinating the 5 to 11 year olds? Yeah, the, the main reason is to drive the virus out from our countries, really, in a sense, because obviously if there's a pool of people getting infected, it keeps spreading, doesn't it? You know, So that's the an immunological reason. You want to have as much vaccination as you can for people at risk of getting infected, whether they get severe disease or not. That's your first reason. And then the second, of course, is to stop them spreading it to someone who's vulnerable. Now, with everybody boosted, it's a low risk that a child might spread to someone and make them sick, you know. But the main reason is to drive this virus out. And remember, it's extremely safe. I mean, it's been in millions Millions and millions of children. I mean, the data in the US is really compelling. They've looked at all these kids, basically. It's very safe. I mean, the view at the moment is it's just another vaccine, and we vaccinate children with many different vaccines. This is another one, you know. So again, parents can be reassured by that too. Yeah, reassurance is fine. The safety, between you and me, the safety isn't an issue. But the question is, has the imperative gone? The imperative that would have been there perhaps even yeah. six or eight weeks ago? Slightly, maybe. And it's changing all the time, as we know. Omicron is a mild disease, you see, and it's the dominant one. It'll be even milder in children, potentially, you know, and we're seeing that. So, so you're right. I mean, the medical grounds for vaccination is probably less, shall we say. So as I say, the main reason is just to get rid of the virus. And, and remember, some children do get sick. You know, a small number can get sick as well. So again, you're protecting them against, even though it's small numbers are still sig- not significant, but there's still a, a, a certain number of kids getting sick. Mm. Um, to, to talk about data for, for just a minute, we were talking with Rachel Lavin of the Business Post yesterday um, and, and she was quoting somebody who was on Neffet's modelling group saying that there could be as many as 60 or 80,000 cases per day um, in, in the country at the moment, uh, re- like different to the 20 odd thousand that we are officially recording. I think it was down to 16 odd yesterday. But, but that just shows the sheer yeah. volume that's out there. Testing is overwhelmed. We are heading towards the point, Luke, and you and I have discussed it being endemic before. Surely, at this point, we're, we're heading towards the idea that not just COVID, but at least Omicron will become endemic, yeah. but quite possibly COVID. It's getting close to that, yeah. I mean, there was one prediction I saw, 40% of the world's population <coughs> will be infected eventually with this one in the next month or so, because it's so infectious, you know. So it's widespread infection with Omicron, and you're right. I mean, another number I saw yesterday, in a week, we're predicting 300,000 people getting infected. That's like, what is it, 8% of our population picking up an infection from Omicron. So you're right, it, w- it will eventually become fully endemic, is the idea. And then, of course, the hope is it will protect against reinfection uh, and stop severe disease, the usual things. But you're right, eventually, Jonathan, there'll be no point in counting cases because it's so widespread is one view because numbers of cases aren't that informative in that situation, you know? Yeah, and the the real metric we're trying to watch is, is ICU, which is, is stubborn um, and stuck at around 90. Um, and as the Taoiseach said yesterday, most of those people, unfortunately for them, uh, were infected with Delta, yeah. not infected with Omicron. So does that give you comfort that not only is the virus milder, the, the vaccines are working as it well does, or is it just yeah. the fact that Omicron is milder and that's it? It's both. It's both. The evidence has grown and grown it's milder and you're breaking that link from cases to hospitalisation for definite with this one. You know, All over the world everybody's reporting the same thing. You get infected and it's a mild disease and you don't end up in the ICU seems to be the case with Omicron and we're just watching that every day. That gets stronger as each day goes by and remember we're now what is it 11 days past Christmas when there would have been loads of mingling and we're not seeing a huge increase in the ICU yet which, you w- which would have happened with Delta you see. So all the evidence is supporting the fact that the virus has changed radically into this Omicron form and it's causing a more mild disease and let's, let's hope the next few days that continues. Within a week or two it'll be even clearer, Jonathan, watch, you know, and we're all predicting by the sort of towards the end of January it'll start to go down. Okay, The, the virus runs out of road because it's, it's infected everybody basically, you see. There's no one else left to infect and therefore it begins to go down, the case numbers begin well, to go speak, down. Speak for yourself, I'm still staving it off anyway. Yes, you're, you're the only... <laughs> there, it, Jonathan, yeah. you're the I'm, I'm becoming a minority though. I, I, it's people who don't have it or who haven't yeah. had it at some stage. You'll be the last man standing, John, eventually, you know, <laughs> but uh, watch out. It, it may be coming your way because it's so common now. Yeah, well, that, that ain't that the truth. I want to talk about reinfections, though, because I, I, I've had anecdotal uh, evidence of this amongst people I know um, who would have had it back then yeah. and who have had it in recent days and recent weeks. It does appear that Omicron 
uh, for all the immunity that would have built up from your previous infection, perhaps boosted by the vaccine, uh, it's still not enough to prevent you from getting no. a form of the illness. That's right. F- there's 15% of people are getting reinfected, the numbers are at the moment. So you've had, you have a prior infection, it might have been Delta, you know, and you get reinfected with Omicron, which is quite a high number, you see. This is a UK study, 116,000 people were examined. And in that particular one, 9.5% had been previously infected. So we know now it can reinfect you, but remember, it stays in your nose. That's the important thing. Because the immune system doesn't really work well in the nose. It works in your lungs. So you'll pick up the infection. It'll be in your nose. You might have a few sniffles, but it won't progress into breathing difficulties because your lungs are protected is the idea. So reinfection is less of a concern because you'll have prior exposure that will give you some protection. And of course, the boosters are tremendously protecting your lungs, you know, because people seem to forget that the main effect of vaccines is to protect your lungs. That that's the key the thing they do and stop severe disease. So it isn't that surprising that we'll see reinfections in people's noses. And again, the symptoms are just sniffles because it's just in your nose you know if it's in your lungs of course you're breathing difficulties but because it can't get to your lungs because it doesn't really live very well there first of all is the first thing we've known about Omicron and secondly your immune system will kill it in your lungs so for, for those reasons then we're not that concerned about reinfections really yeah, because that, that's going to happen, that people are going to get infected with different variants that come on. There's other variants already being identified. I think there was one that came from Cameroon that was identified in France, but they're not worried about that. And Omicron is, is the only show in town yeah, for the moment. at the moment. Yeah, Omicron's the only one. Yeah, there's a couple of more variants out there. Uh, they're called variants of interest, not of concern yet. So we're going to wait and see what happens with those, but nothing to worry about so far, thankfully. Yeah. Um, when we're looking at all of this, um, Luke, what, what the kept coming to me, a phrase in my own head that that what we're doing right now it, that we're not he- we're not deciding that herd immunity is the way forward uh, I don't think uh, but it, it has the sense of a controlled burn that they know that this is burning through the community but they know or at least they hope it's not going to have a negative impact on our hospitalisation yeah. or cause death there is a sense of that isn't there? There is for definite yeah I mean it's, it's moving on the whole time remember but you're right the, the dream here is Omicron is the, is the last game in town in a sense and it's much milder and gives protection now the last thing to worry about is another variant of course that may crop up in the coming months again and we keep a very close eye on that you know that's our last remaining concern in my view, is a new variant that's a bit worse than Omicron. And again, we just keep a very close eye on that one.